everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at some of the most common malware attacks out there, how they work and how they end up on your device. I'll also be giving you some tips and tricks that would help you avoid them altogether. So stay tuned. All right, so first things first, what is malware? Well, malware is basically the two words, malicious and software combined. And it's software that is meant to disrupt, damage, or gain unauthorized access to a computer system. This piece of malware can take a lot of different forms when infecting your computer. So let's take a look at some of its most common types. Starting with ransomware, this is gonna be the most well-known and dangerous type of malware on this list. The way this works is basically that the hacker gains full control over your system and encrypts everything on it. And if you try to access your information, you'll be met with a message telling you to pay an X amount of money within a certain time period or you'll never regain access to your data ever again. And just to show you how common it is, the first half of 2022 saw nearly 236.7 million ransomware attacks worldwide, with the average cost being around 1.85 million, which are crazy numbers to think about. Next up, we have spyware, which is a sneaky type of malware that cyber criminals use to secretly watch what people do on their computers. This often leads them to stealing important information like passwords, email, credit card numbers, SSNs, and much more, which can result in big data breaches. The most common kind of spyware called a keylogger secretly records what you type on your keyboard and takes screenshots of your PC whenever you're dealing with sensitive information. This type of malware is often used by hackers in the early stages of an attack, where they try to find as many weak points and vulnerabilities in your system as possible in order to increase the level of access they have. Moving on to the third type of malware on this list, it's going to be rootkits. These rootkits give hackers administrative level access in secret, allowing them to fully take over a given device. Rootkits are often the first stage in a breach, and after launching one, these cyber criminals can then install more malware or launch DDoS attacks. Rootkits can also install and hide key loggers that we talked about earlier, and are often installed through vulnerability exploits. Of course, all of that can be avoided by using an antivirus. And if you're interested, I'll leave the ones I usually recommend in the description below. Next up, we have bots. A bot refers to a software program capable of carrying out tasks automatically without needing any human input. Bots have the ability to perform tasks at a much faster pace than us. Now, when a computer becomes infected with a bot, it can potentially transmit the bot to other devices, creating a network known as a botnet. This collection of compressed devices controlled by the bot operator can be used to launch large-scale attacks, such as GDOS attacks or brute force attacks, often without the knowledge of the device's owner. The most common use for bots these days is gonna be the crypto mining and the target demographic for such an attack is mostly gamers since they have the proper hardware to get the hacker's results. Another form of malware is gonna be, you guessed it, viruses. These viruses are gonna be attached to some documents files, or even emails, and will execute whenever you open said file. It will then proceed to encrypt, corporate, delete, or move your data and files. Now, the most common way to spread a virus these days is through phishing emails. These emails are made to look like they're from official sources, such as your bank or a service provider, and are worded in a way that forces you to click a link, download, and attachment. One thing to know, however, is that such attempts are easily recognizable, as they're almost always accompanied by either bad grammar or misspelled domain names. Next, we have Trojans, which operate in a similar sense to viruses, since users have to execute them manually. But the main difference is that Trojans are not attached to other files. Instead, they are made to look like the legitimate programs, which leads people into executing them without giving it a second thought. Lastly, we have Adware, which is not exactly harmful compared to the others we've talked about, but still annoying nonetheless. These adware will continuously launch pop-ups and ads, which may lead you to download more harmful types of malware inadvertently. With that being said, there are definitely a lot more malware types that I haven't talked about, such as fileless malware and worms. However, these are the most commonly used malware and the ones that cause the most damage to infected system owners. Now, how do you protect yourself from such malware? 
Well, first of all, the most efficient way to deal with malware and other types of cyber attacks to use is a reputable antivirus program. Top antiviruses like Norton, Total AV, and McAfee not only have perfect malware detection rates, but they also have a bunch of features that would warn you of suspicious links, emails, and messages. Other than that, they also scan your dark web for your personal information and alert you whenever they find anything related to you while offering guidance on how to deal with such a situation. And if you're not sure which antiviruses to go for, I'll be leaving some in-depth reviews of antiviruses I normally recommend to friends and family in the description down below, along with some discounts. So make sure to check that out. Another way to protect yourself from such a cyber attacks is by going through security awareness training. I typically recommend this approach to businesses because many breaches happen when individuals unwittingly execute viruses and torsions, often without a clear understanding of the risks involved. But even if you go through a security training course by yourself, you'll be able to recognize patterns and dead giveaways, which would help you avoid these cyber attacks. And that's it for today's video. Now you know the most common malwares out there and how you can protect yourself from such cyber attacks. Always keep on the lookout for suspicious links, emails, or messages, and don't interact with anything that does not come from a source you trust. Now, if you want to save yourself the trouble, you can also get yourself an antivirus, which looks into everything you're engaging in automatically and warns you whenever it detects suspicious activity. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be leaving my top recommended antiviruses in the description if you're not sure which ones to go for. Other than that, if you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in the comment section down below as I love interacting with you guys. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to see more content like this and I'll see you guys in the next one.